welcome back to my channel. This video is an assisted tutorial for my Not The High Street bag. To find out more about the story behind this pattern and get the written pattern, head to my website, bellacococrochet.com. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you. So click that show more and you'll find the information there. For this tutorial, I have used Paintbox Cotton DK in a selection of colors. You'll find this information in the description box. Additionally, you'll find the quantity details on the blog post. As always, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section. Also subscribe to my channel, click that bell button and enable all notifications so that you never miss a video. For this project, we're going to be using two strands of yarn held together as we crochet and a five millimeter crochet hook. Now we're going to be using multiple balls of this color, but we're only going to need one of each of the colors. So what you might want to do is unravel this so that you have two balls. So you split it into two balls and that stops um, it from becoming a little bit messy. You can work from the inside and the outside at the same time, but sometimes it just gets a little bit knotted up. So you would be best to split this into two balls for your project. So go ahead and prepare your yarn and then meet me back to start your squares. So we're going to begin by creating 13 of these squares. So they all have different colors. Please refer to the blog post or the PDF pattern for those color details. So as I say, we're going to have 13 of these and all of these have three rows in them with different colors. So I'm going to assume that you already know how to create a granny square. If you don't, I'll leave a card here um, to my granny square video, have a practice and then come back and give this a go because I, this is an assisted tutorial. Um, so we're going to be moving through things a little bit quicker than my beginner videos. Okay, let's get started with the center of this square. To begin this project, you're going to take your two strands of your color A for whichever square that you're doing. I'm going to start off with this color here and we're going to do a slip knot, which you can do in whichever method you prefer and insert your crochet hook. So to begin, we are going to chain four, one, two, three and four and we're going to insert our hook into that first chain and slip stitch to form the center circle. So for this round we're going to begin with a chain three, one, two and three which counts as a treble. So remember I'm working in UK terms, in the US this is a double crochet. So after this chain three, which counts as a treble, we are going to do two treble crochets, one and two. We will create a corner by chaining two, one and two. And then we're going to do three treble crochets. So we're going to create the next side, one, two and three. Create another corner, one and two, and then another side by three trebles, one, two and three. Create another corner, one and two, and then three trebles, one, two, and three. So now we have to finish off our corner, one and two, and we're going to insert our hook into that first, or the top of that chain three. So give it a little bit of a wiggle pull through and slip stitch and then you can go ahead and fasten off that round. So you can snip off that yarn, pull out your hook and there we have round one. So for round two we're going to uh, take our colour B 
and we are going to join with a slip stitch in any chain two space. So I'm just going to put a slip knot on my hook, find that chain two space and slip stitch. We're going to begin by chaining three and again this counts as a treble. I'm going to lay down these tail ends as I'm working um, so that it's doing a little bit of my job for me um, because there will be quite a few ends to sew in unfortunately at the end. We're then going to do two trebles into this same space. One and two. And then we have a pattern repeat. So what we do here is we're just going to move straight over into this chain two space and we're going to work this corner. So we're going to do three trebles, one, two, and three. So three trebles into that chain two space, chain two, one and two, and three trebles, one, two, and three. So you're going to repeat that again um, two more times. So three trebles, train, chain two, three trebles in this chain two space and the next, and then meet me back and I'll show you how to finish off this last corner. Okay, so now that we've done these three corners, we need to finish off this next one. And we're going to do that by doing three trebles into that same chain two space, which we started in. One, two, and three. Chain two to create the corner. And then join with a slip stitch into the top of that beginning chain three. And we can go ahead and fasten off and we need to grab our colour C. Okay so I have my colour C on my hook. I'm going to slip stitch into any uh, chain two space. I'm going to go ahead and work that chain three for my first treble and also add two trebles into that same space. So we're going to work our way across to the corner again but this time we have this space just here between the two sets of um, or two clusters of three trebles. So what we want to do now is find that space between those two sets and do three treble crochets. One, two, three move over into the corner and then we're going to work the corner so three trebles one two three chain two and three trebles one two and three So you're now going to repeat those instructions twice more. So three trebles into that space between the clusters, three trebles, chain two, three trebles into the corner. Go ahead, work your way round and I'll show you how to finish off round three. Okay, so to finish off this round, we're going to do three trebles into the next space. One, two, three and then three trebles into that um, first chain two space one two and three I'm going to chain two and then join with a slip stitch into the top of that begin in chain three and tie off.
So what you want to do now is complete all of the colours, so all of your 13 squares, um, so that they are ready for the border. Uh, so go ahead and do that and then meet me back once you're ready to start joining them together. So what I'm going to show you now is how to use the join as you go method to join these squares. Now please refer to the, um, the pattern so that you can see the sequence of how you're going to work these. Your very first square is actually going to be this colour. I know I've used this colour for demonstrations um, because I felt that it would stand out better, but this is your first square. Now this first square isn't going to be joined to anything, so I'm going to demonstrate what you're going to do for this um, the, your initial square so to stay tuned for that and then I'm going to demonstrate how you are going to use the join as you go method to slowly build your um, your bag so basically what we're going to be doing is doing the first square then we'll add the second square the third square and then we'll be adding the fourth and fifth and then as you're adding, you're going to be joining on more sides. So um, again, refer to the pattern, which will show you which squares to do at which point and also where to join them as well. So for example, this square here is going to be joined to the square on the back and the square on the front. And as the pattern builds, this particular square is folded over. So please have a look at that um, at that chart so that you can see what you're building when. But I'm going to demonstrate the general technique for you, starting with this initial square. So as I say, your initial square is going to be a different colour. So please be mindful of that before you start this very first one. So we're going to join with a slip stitch into that chain two space and chain three for our first treble and then we're going to add an additional two trebles into that corner space to complete that um, three treble cluster. We then have a pattern repeat so our pattern repeat is going to be three trebles into the next space one two and three and three trebles into the next space. So as you can see on the pattern, it says three trebles into the next space, that's written in brackets and it says twice and that what it, that's what it means. So we're just going to repeat those instructions twice. Three trebles into the next space, three trebles into the next space. We then have three trebles, chain two, three trebles into the next chain two space. So we're just creating our corner here one, two, and three, chain two, and then one, two, and three. So you're going to repeat that pattern repeat twice more. So three trebles, three trebles, and then three trebles, tra chain two, three trebles into the corner space. So do that twice more and then meet me back to finish off this round. Okay, so now you've completed that twice more, we need to finish off this round. And to do that, we're going to do those three trebles into the next space. One, two, and three. Three trebles into the next space one, two, and three, and then three trebles into that chain two space, one, two, and three. Chain two, and go ahead and join like so. This time we will not be um, tying off our yarn because we're going to use the same border colour for round five. 
So round five is going to be slightly different. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to move straight into the, these spaces. So we're not going to do any um, trebles at the beginning of this round just yet. So we're going to do three trebles into the next three spaces. So treble, treble and treble. Move across three trebles, one, two, and three, three trebles, one, two, and three. And then we're going to work our corner. So our corner is three trebles, one, two, three, chain two, and three trebles into that same chain two space. One, two, and three. So then we're going to repeat that pattern, repeat twice more. So it's the three trebles into the next space three times, one, two, and three, and then work the corner, three trebles, chain two, three trebles. So you're going to work this side and this side. Once you've finished that corner, meet me back and I'll show you how to finish off. Now you've done those three sides, we're going to finish off this final side and we're going to do those three trebles into the next three spaces. So I'm just going to fast forward through this bit up into the corner. Okay, so this is the final corner and it does look a little bit different. It's quite easy to get confused here um, of where this original um, corner is. So this is the corner chain two space and this is the chain three from the beginning of the round. So what we want to do here into this chain two space is do three trebles, one, two, and three chain two and now we want to finish off this cluster of three trebles so we now want to add two trebles one and two and then join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three to complete that round so fasten off and that is round five which we're going to repeat again, but it's going to be a little bit different when we are attaching to the sides. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you now, how we're going to work that round five by also attaching to another square. Okay, so here I have another square, and again, please ignore the colors, because these are just example colors. You need to refer to the actual pattern for which squares to join to which. But I have done my colours, I've done my round four and I've started my round five. I would suggest that you never um, do the join to another square on your first row or your first side, should I say. Um, so I've just done my first side here. Um, so I'm now just working the corner of this side. I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to attach to the other square. So I'm going to locate the corner of this square and I'm simply going to slip stitch into that corner and chain one for the other chain in that corner. So we chain two, but we've got a slip stitch in between. I'm now going to continue to do my three treble crochets into that same corner but instead of just moving straight into this next space now 
I'm going to find the corresponding base just here. So this is the next space along and we're going to slip stitch in to there. So I'm going to insert my hook and pull through for a slip stitch like so. So that's now connected. And then I'm going to do my three trebles into that space. I'm now going to find the next space and slip stitch into that space and work my three trebles. One, two, and three. Find the next space and slip stitch. And work my three trebles one, two, and three. Find the next space and slip stitch, and then we have the corner. So we'll do three trebles one, two, and three chain one, slip stitch into the corner, chain one, and three trebles into the corner space. One, two, and three. You would then continue to build your, your um, fifth row all the way round to the beginning. But you have your join as you go, just here. So this has connected those two rows together. So that is when you're doing um, one row. And now I'm going to demonstrate how you would do it for when there is more than one side um, to connect. Okay, so I have my bag here. Um, now this particular square uh, will eventually go here and join along these two sections but I'm actually going to demonstrate this square which will sit here. Um, it's actually this one um, because this is actually going to connect to the front and the back so it's a little bit more fiddly. So I'm going to demonstrate that one to you now. I'll just go ahead and add the round four for the border and then come back and show you how to work this. Okay, so I am going to show you now how to attach this to the front and the back at the same time or with the same square. I have done my round five or the first edge of my round five. I'm going to turn my work round so that I'm starting um, here. So the first edge I'm going to join to this square and then the second edge I'm going to join to this square. You can either do it like this or you can straighten out your work like this, um, just depending how you feel uh, or what's gonna be best for you. So I've done my chain, uh, my chain one after my three trebles. Now what I'm going to do is find the corner of this square and then the corner of this uh, square next to it. And I'm actually, instead of going into the corner, I'm going to go into uh, just where the join is. So instead of going into here, I'm going to go into that joining space. And I'll do that when it comes to all of the joins when there's multiple squares joined together. So here we have our first join. I'm going to chain one to finish off that corner and then go ahead and do those three trebles to finish off that corner. I'm going to find the next space. So 
So we have our corner, our next space where I'm going to slip stitch into and then work my three trebles. So I'm just going to fast forward until I get to the next corner space and then come back to normal speed for moving on to the next square. Okay, so I'm just about to work this corner. Um, I will say that it always feels like you have gone wrong a little bit at this point because this seems much longer than this, but that's because we haven't built this corner section in yet. So I'm going to do my three trebles in this corner space. Two and three. I'm going to chain one and then I'm just going to slightly alter my work just to make it easier to work into. And then I'm going to find that corner space of this square, which is here, the corner space of the square next to it, which is here. And then we're going to be working into that join space just there. So work the join. I'm going to adjust the work again which will sit slightly differently because um, this square is going to be folded. So just make sure that you're working uh, where you're comfortable. Chain one to finish off that corner, three trebles. And then it's just a matter of now working into that next square. So three trebles. If you're really struggling with knowing um, which square that you are working into, you could try using stitch markers to mark the actual square just to make sure that, um, or just to make it easier to see. But once you get the hang of this, you, it should be pretty easy um, to know which squares you're joining. It's just the ones which are folded at the corners, which are slightly trickier than the rest. So I have another set of three trebles here. working into that corner. Chain one, find the join space of those two squares chain one and then continue to add round five to this square. So you then just move straight into the next stitch to complete round five for that square. So if I just pull this out and then lay this down you can see that this square is now um, joined to the front and joined to the back, the same as this one. And then all we ha would have left to do is join a square here, which attaches to these edges, square here, which attaches to these edges, and then the same on the back. So go ahead and join all your squares together um, you will have two extra here, so I need to join those and I'll meet you back and I'll show you how to add the finishing touches and the handles. Okay, so now that your bag is all connected, what we're going to do is create um, like a border, which is going to run along this edge all the way around. So we're just going to work through 
one um, thickness at a time. So what we want to do is attach our yarn, so our border colour into any stitch along the, uh, the top edge. We're going to attach with a slip stitch and chain up one. This does not count as a stitch. And then we're going to do double crochet all the way along. So double crochet in the US is known as single crochet. So go into that first stitch. You might want to mark your stitch um, if you want to. We're going to double crochet into every stitch and into every space all the way around. So I'll just work my way up here to the corner space. So one double crochet into the top of every treble and in the space in between. So when you get to the corner, you just want to do two double crochets in that corner space and then start to work your way across. So when you get to this section here, you can do one double crochet into the corner and then another double crochet into this corner and then just continue your way all the way around. So go ahead, work those stitches all the way around the top and then meet me back once you've uh, got back to the very beginning. Okay, once you've worked your way all the way around, you're going to join in the first double crochet with a slip stitch and fasten off. And then we're going to move on to attaching the handles, which are going to attach here and here. Okay, so for the handle, we're going to use the same color. We're going to look at this peak of this um, first side here. And our strap is going to be eight stitches wide. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this first cluster of stitches here, and then we're going to start in this, the double crochet above that first treble. So join with a slip stitch, chain one, which does not count as a stitch, and then double crochet. So we're going to do eight double crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So eight double crochets across. We're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're simply going to do one double crochet into each stitch back across that row. Okay, so just count your number of stitches, remembering that, that that chain one does not count as a stitch. And we're simply going to double crochet into each stitch all the way along and keep turning at the end of the row. So this will build and build and build you can obviously adapt the, the length of your straps for uh, your own preference. I'm going to build mine to the length of around 19 inches, uh, but as I say, you can do it to whichever length you like. We're actually going to be building it and attaching it to the opposite side. So go ahead, pause the video, work your the length strap which you um, require, 
or you can do it to around 19 inches and then meet me back and I'll show you how to connect to the opposite side. Okay, so I have now completed the length of my strap. I want to lay it down so that I know that there's no twist in the work and whatever length you've done, you want to make sure that you're working back this way um, from the outside of the um, from the outside of the bag inwards for this last row because what we're going to do is we're going to find that corner section here and we're going to slip stitch onto that corner piece like so we'll then do a double crochet into that stitch slip stitch into the next stitch double crochet and slip stitch double crochet and this is what we're going to do all the way along And then double crochet into that last stitch. Fasten off. And then you're just sewing your ends. I would just sew it in so that this is pulled down to towards the bag. So this side does look slightly different to the other side, uh, just because of the way that it's connected. However, I wanted to crochet it on rather than sew it on just so that it's a nice solid seam. So all you have to do now is complete the same um, thing on the other side, so a second, um, second handle and then you have completed your Not The High Street bag. So as I say, I will leave everything in the description box if you want to go and check out the full pattern and the PDF as well, and also find out more about the story behind this bag. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section. Share your makes on Instagram, Facebook. Make sure that you tag me so that I can see. Click that subscribe button and the bell button to be sure that you're notified of all of my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.